Hey guys, welcome to Show for Gamers, episode 7. We're your gamers, JNL. He's really hungry apparently. Um, in this episode, we're going to be uh, reviewing Dynasty Warriors 6 Empires. So, first off, you want to ask yourself if you're watching this, do you like the Dynasty Warriors series? If not, I can already guarantee this probably isn't a game you're interested in, unless you're a big strategy buff. Um, basically, the difference between Dynasty Warriors Empires and Dynasty Warriors is they add a huge strategy element in it where you actually play as a singular officer and you basically fight your way into power uh, and you fight to take over certain territories of China and you eventually take over China. So that's basically the gist of what you're doing in the game and previous Empires games have basically just been like boom you're the ruler and then you would take over bits and pieces of China and take over China. What this Empire's game has done, which I think really adds to um, the overall depth of it, is you get to be basically a vagrant officer, a mercenary, if you will. And there's all these different mercenary missions where you can gain treasure by helping um, uh, pedestrians and whatnot. Yeah, like and villagers. Yeah, villagers and the citizens and stuff. By doing stuff like killing tigers and wolves, taking out bandits, you know. Um, and then instead of becoming a ruler right away, what they had is a more realistic approach where you become hired by a ruler of your choosing. And each ruler is different, he rules differently. They usually give you a task that you have to complete during the month and whatnot, which I like. It adds, again, more depth. And then you, yeah. eventually you can overthrow, you can join factions within um, the ruling nation yeah. or whatever, which is, again, really cool. Um, I found out uh, as I was playing is. If you get to a certain general level, this is what I really like, you basically get to talk in the council. Yeah, start stuff. contributing to some of the ideas and to I got the same point. Yeah, it's really cool. Um th that that's really cool. And then again, you can overthrow the guy you're serving, and basically that's when you start fighting um to take control of the rest of China against the other rulers. And then that's when you have officers underneath you, you have your own individual war councils. Um, you have to worry about um, taxes and stuff. And I don't know why they did this, but in this one they have cards. But those cards aren't anything. Like, they're talking like they're cards. Each character has specific cards, but it's they don't do anything, really. Well, no, they, they don't. Like, yeah, it's in your councils and stuff, like um, tax. Well, tax was, oh, in yeah. all, tax was in all of them. You get 2,000 extra gold every month. But in this mm -hmm. one, they're like, it's the tax card. So I don't know why they are promoting it as a card when... It's generally the same. It's the same that's, thing. That's what I'm saying. Like the card doesn't really mean anything. It's just the same thing. They're just calling it something different, yeah. basically, in this game. So yeah, the new additions are um, basically the mercenary thing. How you become a ruler. Otherwise, once you're a ruler, it's pretty much the same game you've played before. Um, I noticed that the big, long, forty-five minute battles really don't take place. Ooh, hot. <laughs> they really don't take place until you're a ruler. Until you own your own nation or whatever. Mm -hmm. You put all the crap sauce on there. No, it's not a sauce, it's the actual... Oh, exactly. the actual roll. Yeah. He's eating Chinese. I don't even know if that's Chinese or not. Anyway, so that's the cool thing. The other cool thing I saw, um, if you're new to Dynasty Warriors, I always check out Empires first. Because th the addition of all this strategy actually makes the game better, in my opinion, because in the Dynasty Warriors series, it's literally you hacking and slashing through loads of dudes, where this, I think there's more thought process, there's more game involved in the Empire's Yeah, games. there's at least, there is hack and slash in it, but you get breaks between that, where you can decide, you know, what to do, and do a little more hands-on stuff with some other it things. It feels you know? more tolerable, instead of just... The same one mission after another, another just, yeah. yeah, let's just hordes of guys, right. And going into the battles, you get to strategize a little bit more and picking which cards you want. Um, there's a card like, um, it's like Fire Assault or something, and basically every base you go into during that battle starts on fire, which makes it easier to take over bases. So doing strategies like that makes each individual battle feel different, which I think Dinosaurs has always lacked. So if this is the first time you're checking it out, Another really cool feature that they have in the options menu is the encyclopedia, the archives, um, archives.
archives, whatever, where you can basically go in and read about the, the Three Kingdoms era yeah. and learn about it if, if you not already know all the names of the, of the actual, like, um, Three Warriors no. Kingdoms and stuff. He's eating. Hello, there you go. Um, yeah, so, I mean, some things we don't like about this is, again, um, Koei and Y-Force Omega are the guys behind this game. I'd really love to see you guys work a little bit harder and start putting some more money behind these. Um, the graphics still haven't really improved yeah. uh, in, in combat. I love the new character design. I just wish I could pick my own colors in like a color wheel instead of predetermined colors. Yeah, I love how I can have a wide variety of colors. Yeah, I love how I can unlock more. more um, That's really fun, yeah. Just more outfit options while playing the game. Um, but... Again, like I think you can create a hundred customizable characters, which to me seems excessive, but I don't care, that's fine with me, I'll probably fill up all the slots. <laughs> but it's just in general, like the battle graphics could be so much better in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And that's something that like that game has forever lacked. And like if they would just And again, Dinosaur Warrior 6 was kind of disappointing because the appeal of this series was each individual character had a specific fighting style and a specific weapon. In 6, they got sloppy and just kind of bored, or I don't know what they did. But they're like, here's this character and this character. Their weapon looks different, but it's the exact same fighting style. I'm like, that yeah. sucks. And if you notice in Empires, characters like Zhang He, he has his claws back. Meng Huo was in this game, and he wasn't in um, Dynasty Warriors 6, and now he's in Empires. And it, I didn't even use him. I mean, what would you, you were saying he could do? Oh, like, well, his were, weapon is a giant pillar. That's what he uses, but some of his power-up attacks, he like, he'll pull a coconut tree out of the ground and spin it and coconuts will fly all over, and he'll just punch that and it'll fly into guys, and then another power-up attack, he pulls a giant mushroom out of the ground and just beats people to death with a giant mushroom, so I think it's a little more fun and creative, really. Well, he was always a fun character, but yeah, our point is, when you're editing your characters, you can pick any of these fighting styles, so... I, you could have technically have your guy wielding a giant mushroom. Yeah, I, I made I made this huge character, pretty much as big as you can get him, and he's in this huge steel armor, and it's all gold, and then I have Meng Wo's giant pillar, and I'm just running around this giant guy, just beating people down with a giant pillar, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so... Really fun. Um, that's basically the good and bad of it. Are, you know, and again, when this comes down to it, you either have to be a strategy fan or a dinosaurs fan to get this game, I think. And because of the fact that it's such a strategy-based game and actually like taking over China takes so long, I really don't think it's a game you'd rent. You'd either buy it because you're into it or you're not. So that's why uh, for the show for gamers, we're gonna give it a six. Um, and the reason it's a six is because I think the strategy is so good and it's fun to take over China. Yeah. And this could definitely be a higher up score if they would have put more money in it behind graphics and. Uh, and voice acting. Voice acting. That's that, another that big was another big one. Yeah. Uh, anytime you're helping villagers, they say the same thing. It's one line. They're actually like, help. That's just help laziness to like, me. Really? Get a couple in there, you know? Oh, please help us. Oh, please help us. And they'll literally say it. Like, like over and over. Over and over. And as you're running around. You're, it's like, you're, you're on the map, and they're in a base up here, and you have to travel all the way across, and they just keep saying, you're like, okay, that's annoying. Like, I, yeah, for so. a while, I had unplugged the sound, and I was listening to music, and just playing the game, because I think it's a game where you don't really that, have to have That was what I was going to say, is you can so. do what I do, is yeah. play the game while listening to some of your music. I mean, I've always done dinosaurs like that. Yes. Yeah. Some missions are very monot monotonous. Not monotonous. Ugh. Anyway. But, yeah, so, that's basically that. Um, coming up, we're going to be having a... Fallout 3, we're going to basically go through all the downloadable content to date and have some news on the game, and that's going to be our 4th of July episode, because Capital Wasteland, Independence, America, kind of fits in there, makes sense, and uh, you can't make it because I think you're camping or something, but I know our next episode is going to be on uh, Overlord 2, so it'll be just me talking about Overlord 2, but you should check it out, um, see what I think. So, um, basically... That's all we have for this show, and tune in next time for episode 8, The Stones of Shento. Thanks, guys.